So this review is on a Campagnolo Super Record 11 speed crank arm. So um, this guy here, it's, this is the non-drive side. And um, yeah, as you can see, it's cut in, cut in half. There you go. Um, now this one, this one came in because it was damaged in a in an accident. Um, I can't remember whether it was the hit by a car or something like that. But in this area here, um, it's cracked and all through. And I'll show you some pics of that later. But basically, um, you know, it was in the bottom bracket and it got impacted like that and um, and basically bent it. So, um, and as you know, carbon doesn't bend. It either takes a load or it breaks. So in this case, it broke. So let's um, let's have a look at it. In this picture, like I've just got another, uh, it's a Campag record, not super record. This one's actually a super record. Um, the difference is the um, the titanium uh, axle and uh, the record has got uh, got steel. So um, I think uh, Hambini was talking about these cranks a little while ago um, and there was a lot of comments and stuff on, you know, the, how the the bolt on the super record is a titanium bolt and it's a left hand thread um, all these sorts of things so I won't go too much into that sort of stuff that's already been covered I'll talk more about the um, about the carbon and the way it's the way it's made and put together there's a, um, a sort of a close-up of the crack on the outside um, yeah so that's that's just just here um, now when we cut into it which will be um, which will be the next slide you can see a delamination and um, you know you can see right through here it's quite a um, quite a big delamination that's sort of propagated through the whole structure so the um, yeah so it obviously took quite a bit of force because that's a that's a fairly thick section i mean there is a transition in thickness there so um that's a bit of a stress concentration but it would have been quite a quite a large force to be able to do that so in this uh in this image you can see the um the marble effect that that people talk about it's um and so it's made this is made out of um like a sheet molding compound where it's a whole bunch of uh, shorter fibers which are all stacked um, sort of like a almost like a quilt if you like um, so the fibers are just sort of basically all randomly orientated in a, in a sheet and then those sheets are put down and then it's compression molded and that's what gives it the, um, the sort of appearance of um, of the marbling so it's different to um, the marbling that you may see on a BMC frame or other frames which have you know just clear coated um, where they've sanded through plies um, in the factory and that which uh, I'd imagine that's unintentional in, in this case it's intentional it's meant to be like that um, yeah sheet molding compound SMC yeah if you want to look it up So this is inside. Um, that's what it looks like on the inside. So you can see that there's um, there's a thread molded in. Uh, we'll insert it uh, in this end, um, and it's hollow all through this section here. So that's all hollow, and um, and so the way it's done is they they put a material like a a soluble mandrel. I remove that. Uh, oh, it's a highlight. I need to erase it. There we go. Um, there we go. It's erased. Um, they put a soluble, um, a soluble mandrel in there. Now it's it can be like a low melting point metal, and you know, it's, it's something that needs to be um, have a high enough compressive strength that it can take the com the compressive load and the temperature of curing. Um, so basically, they have this mandrel, they wrap the fibre, uh, this sheet moulding compound around it, they place it in the mould, uh, which then is um, 
it's a two-piece mold it's pressed pressed together and yeah and that's what you end up with this hollow cavity now I'll show you then there's a little plug where um, they then remove that mandrel because once that's that's all encapsulated there's so that's sort of all sealed in there so then you need to get it out um, unless you want to leave it in there um, but because it's a, it's a, a melt a low melting point metal it's it's probably quite heavy um, a lot of those are sort of lead based or, or you know um, but OHS probably not lead so much anymore but you know some of these um, antimony maybe or one, one of those um, anyway the, um, the you need to get that out so um, let's have a closer look at the thread so you can see that um, that's sort of that's sort of been threaded in so it's a thread with a thread on the outside now I have had quite a number of these over the years come in where that thread um, has has disbonded so you know it's basically come loose in 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 there so it's it's un, unscrewed um, particularly if your pedal gets jammed in um, if you if you haven't put anti-seize on your pedal and you um, then go to undo the pedal and you you, you can't undo it because it's, it's really tight so you get a really really big spanner on it and then you you pull that insert out basically um, usually it can be bonded back in you know without any issue but um, the other thing here is you can see the profile of of that insert how it sort of tapers away you know so the wall thickness through here is thicker than what it is to the middle of the arm and uh, you know also the step in this region here um, also a big solid chunky laminate at, at the end um, now I don't know um, I haven't like this one's this is a 172.5 mil arm I need to have a look at some of the other arms to see whether they just put that insert in in various places along that sort of thicker end or whether they actually have a specific mold um, I'd need to check that I'm not sure off the top of my head um, okay let's go to the next the next slide okay so here is that little plug I was talking about so there's a hole here and that just happens to be under where they put the sticker with the serial number and the crank length etc so that sort of covers that up in that little space there so that's sort of effectively a drain hole for this um, low melting point metal which is then removed um, after after cure so I don't know specifically what the, the cure cycle um, would be typically with these pre pregs it might be it might be 120 degrees or 140 degrees or something like that um, but in this case it would need to be lower than what the melting point is and then you do like a like a post cure so you when you post cure the part you you take it to a uh, to a higher temperature to drive up the glass transition temperature the TG um, now you do that in, in one step so you'd be draining that mandrel at the same time as a post cure so the process is doing two things it's adding um, environmental stability by pushing the cure and removing that mandrel so if we look here we can see uh, how smooth the internal finish is through here and um, you can also see um, the ply buildups like if you look closely through here um, I'll erase that so you can see it but have a close look through there and you can see actually orientations of the fiber um, you know when I cut this up it um, I, I didn't polish it very you know I didn't polish it at all so that's just straight off the saw so um, if you polish that surface you'll be able to really have a good look at what the fibre orientations are and all that stuff um, but yeah you can see how this mandrel has cre created a very nice uniform internal surface and um, 
Yeah, so there's no wrinkles or um, thickness variations and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, this compression moulding type process, and, and some people call it forged carbon. Um, you know, it's just sort of a bit of a, a, a trendy name, but it's, um, yeah, it's, you know, it's basically being pressed with this sheet moulding compound. Um, what else? Yeah, you can, you can see the damage through here a little bit as well. Um, but yeah, so I'll re erase that. There we go. So yeah, the um, the inner the inner thickness uh, the inner inner surface is thicker through here than it is on the outer face. Um, so yeah, you know they've they would have done some engineering calculations on the loads, etc. And and uh, yeah, optimise supplies um, accordingly. Um, we hope so, at least. Um, okay. The um, the axle then is uh, is pressed in and 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 bonded. Um, yeah, you can be looking at it there as well. Like you can uh, put in put in front of the camera might help. Um, so. Obviously, being a titanium axle, that's that's nice from a galvanic corrosion point of view. The um, you know they're both um, if you like titanium being quite a noble noble material, um, you don't get the galvanic problems like you would if you had a um, an aluminium or magnesium or something like that. But not that you want to make an axle out of that small diameter out of magnesium or aluminium but um yeah so you can you can see that like the bond you know, through there as well there we go the middle the camera's back to front so um yeah i'm doing a great job here aren't i here we go let's see if i can look down the middle of it nah, oh, yeah close close nah, there we go um so it's bonded in and um Oh, yeah, I won't, as I said before, I won't talk about the um, all the bearings and the tolerances and all that sort of stuff. It is a hearth joint. Um, it's probably quite expensive to machine that part. Um, I do see problems, to, like particularly with the tie, when it because the tie will flex a little bit more, and if the cups on the frame that the bearing sits in are not um, are not supported well enough. You can get uh, movement at those cups, and those cups will tend to creep around a little bit, and can be uh, create some wear and some noise and a few things like that. So um, yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll, so I won't go too much into that. Uh, so the last thing I'll talk about is there's two things on this slide. So you can see on the threaded insert here, it's got that sort of olive greeny sort of color um, now that's a, a surface treatment um, like a preparation for bonding so that, that's that's good they've taken the the, the precautions um, you know to avoid corrosion and, and promote uh, the adhesion and all that sort of stuff as I said before I have seen them as inserts come loose but it's it is more when um, you know is a handling sort of thing as much as anything else I'd say um, and then the other sort of thing which is a bit of a negative and you can just sort of see a little bit through here um, through there is the graphics the um, they they tend to go yellow over uh, sort of quite quickly so the the clear coat that they're using obviously gets affected by the UV and, and goes yellow. And so, you know, what used to be a white, quite a, a striking white graphic ends up becoming like sort of a dirty yellow sort of white. And, um, you know, this is not a cheap item by any means and it sort of detracts from it. Uh, um, you know, I've seen it on, on some of the frames as well, like, you know, the, uh, the Pinarellos and the Colnagos and, um, and Cipollinis to a certain extent as well. 
so you put them out in the sun and and and, and they go yellow. The older specialised used to do it really badly as well, but they seem to be a bit better now. But the um, best thing, if you're paying this sort of money, I don't think your clear coat should go yellow on on your uh, however many hundreds of dollars crank arm. So um, bit of a bit of a down uh, you know, points points against from that. Um, but overall, uh, you know, they they are a nice. Uh, a nice well-made crank arm um, the uh, I, I don't use them myself um, I'm, I'm running Shimano stuff or it, I mean I'm a current road box of running SRM cranks the old old SRM pros um, but there that they, they are a, they are a nice well-made crank um, the crank itself doesn't have too many problems I, I spoke about the, the bearings in the frame that's sort of the, the primary thing I've seen um, and then the pedal insert if you if you do something stupid with it but apart from that yeah it's not too bad so um, yeah we'll leave it at that and I'll um, I've got a I've got an FSA crank here as well which um, which I can do as um, and show you the difference between this one and um, and the FSA, and there's quite a big difference, let me tell you. Um, so that's it. Um, the yeah, I thought I'll do this one because it's like this is much quicker than doing. I've still got the the Cinarello comparison to do. That's going to take a lot of time. Things have been really, really busy, um, and I'll get to it when I can. And uh, yeah, we'll see you again soon. Okay, bye.